All right, everyone, now we have to talk about Pete Booty Judge, who is arguably second in command within the Biden admin as far as people that might run in 2024. Uh, I think that more and more smart money is on him at least attempting because they don't expect Biden to run again, even though he claims that he wants to. And it's possible. I just don't think it's hugely likely because clearly the man is a shambling zombie mentally at this point. <laughs> just look at him claiming to have uh, contracted cancer the other day. Oh boy, there, there was no damage control there as a main video for a reason, because it's hilarious. I'm hoping that he doesn't, because I don't want Kamala in that office. Booty Judge um, being grilled on electric vehicles, fuel prices, gas, etc. Um, and he's sticking, man, with that hard line. I, I mean, I know that he's transport secretary of a liberal regime, so this isn't particularly abnormal. But gay Dracula um, is... is effectively coming out, link in the description archive, of course, and continuing to push the meme that is electric vehicles within the United States. Here's a big problem uh, for the green agenda. The green agenda tends to be most concentrated in big cities. Now, if you live in New York City or LA or something, and you don't really travel across country, having an electric vehicle is perfectly fine. Yes, of course, it takes all night to mostly charge your vehicle. There may only be a few charging stations around you, but it is feasible. It's like here in the Netherlands. There are charging stations fairly regularly uh, around the country, some of them which are literally by a fucking woodshed in the middle of nowhere because the Netherlands is so densely populated. Uh, the same with uh, mass transit, trams and trains and so forth. In an area of high population density, you can make it work especially when a lot of people, uh, they're using their car to go to the Yumbo or something. So they're traveling a few miles, that's it. It's not really that difficult to maintain an electric vehicle. It's not a problem. The United States is still mostly rural. That is, vast swaths of the country are uninhabited and virtually uninhabitable. The Rocky Mountains, some of the really cold plains up north, the forests of New England, the swamps of southern Florida, remote, not many people there, maybe some hermits or some drug lords, you know, cooking meth out in the middle of a cave somewhere. Otherwise, not many people there. A large proportion of the rest is fucking farmland. Now, how are you going to get electric vehicles to work in a one-horse town of 2,000 people out in the middle of North Dakota? It's not going to work. Nobody's going to use the electric vehicles. The fact is that Europe and the United States, in this sense, are not the same. There aren't many parts of Europe that are still remote and largely farm, and where you do find those farms, you find little villages interspersed where you could have a charging station and enough people to justify its existence. That's meme number one, the idea that the United States can be like, uh, like Eastern China or Japan or Western Europe. No, it can't. It can, if you're in New York City in that general region, yeah, it works. If you're in the, 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 the Triangle of Texas, you're in Austin or Houston or something, you're in you know, Los Angeles, San Francisco, you're on the coast in California, maybe Seattle or something. Chicago, certainly that region. Yes, if you are in a big city, it can make sense to invest in an electric vehicle. And there are electric vehicles, by the way, that do cost less than 64 grand. That's just the average, but that average is misleading because it's dragged up by the higher end models, which tend to be more expensive <laughs> due to the function of an electric vehicle uh, than gas powered vehicles. Apparently the average cost for a gas vehicle now is over 30 grand, and that's a lot of used vehicles are included in that. Um, that's draconian. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really make economic sense that the costs are so high. Thanks, Biden. That's literally been done mainly under your watch. Here's the other part of the meme, though. The other, well, technically it's two parts to the second part. The first element of the second part of the electric vehicle meme is that much of that electricity to power them, it's not coming from solar, it's not coming from wind, hell, it's not even coming from, uh, from nuclear generation or a hydroelectric dam or something. It comes from coal and gas and oil, and that's it. The second problem is that the U.S. electrical grid is already overstretched. It's underdeveloped for the amount of servicing that it has to do. And my solution to this for years has been decentralization. Instead of making a massive ass 500,000 friggin acre solar field, you can pay homeowners to mount them on their buildings and give them a tax rebate and they'll host them. And by the way, many states have had rebates of that kind 
uh, in some cases until fairly recently. Vermont was one of them. Vermont would write off a significant amount of taxable revenue if you put up a, a qualifying solar system. That ended at the state level a few years ago. I think Shumlin was still governor at the time, but it wasn't, it's not exactly ancient history. It was allowed to lapse. Um, I don't know exactly why they did that because it was clearly working. Home solar in the state of Vermont, despite it being a fairly cloudy and, and miserable rainy state, um, took off. And it's being put up by people for a reason, because it does eventually bring a return. If you're going to live in that home for more than 15, 20 years, eventually you go beyond breaking even, and it is a, a, it's a sound investment, especially when energy prices keep rising. That original investment doesn't look so high after all. Now, potentially, as long as the costs keep moving in that Bidenomic direction, of course. So, you've got the problem whereby the electricity that's generated to actually use electric vehicles they're coal-powered cars or at least fossil fuel powered more than half of the electricity isn't coming from renewable resources um, so what's the point it doesn't really make any sense now does it the other component of it is the the waste uh, and, and the problem of maintenance of the vehicle of course an electric battery for an electric vehicle can cost many thousands of dollars to be replaced with a standard engine, it might just be one component. Okay, $500 later, the engine works again. That's not the way that it works with the lithium batteries that are in electric vehicles. There's also the problem of the mass importation of the goods uh, that are required to create these vehicles. The U.S. is a massive automotive uh, exporter, actually, and people don't realize this. The U.S. car industry still actually is a power to behold. The problem is a lot of the EV components are coming from China. The lithium's coming from China. The rare earth minerals for the computers and shit is coming from China. We have a, a problem right now where they're looking at processors and other computer systems being entirely reliant on China and by proxy North Korea. And we're treating it as though it's a national security issue. Why is it that you want to switch to electric vehicles, especially when, again, it would strain the grid? You haven't even built the grid up. You could solve that problem over the course of a few years fairly easily while saving people money and making electric vehicles at the very least in suburbs and small town America much more attractive. But they're not attempting to do this. Everything is centralized. Pete Booty Judge has effectively put forth a, a plan to try to force people to use electric vehicles, to lean on the states, to limit uh, gas using vehicles at all. That would be a terrible idea. By the way, what do you have to say for trucking, which uses diesel? Um, what do you, I mean, the, the transportation grid to even bring the batteries to the shop where they're put in the cars is going to require fossil fuel in order to do it. There aren't many electric powered uh, big rigs now, are there? The fact is that electric powered vehicles are effectively nothing more than a meme with current technology. It's entirely possible at any time we make some major breakthrough in battery design, it uses less of the Chinese minerals, it charges a lot faster, it holds its charge a lot longer, it makes it much cheaper. That could happen. That would be great. And the other problem is, again, unless you get those charging stations up in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, you're going to get towed by a tow truck that uses gasoline <laughs> to, to the repair shop where the electricity is being made by gas and nuclear and things like that. It's not made by solar cells. Um, it's, a, it's a complete meme. It's a farce. Electric vehicles right now are simply not doable, and they're more, much more expensive on average, including the lower-end models. They were talking about, oh, there's this Nissan brand. It's only $26,000. The, the person who's worrying about the gas prices is not looking for a new vehicle right now anyway. The used vehicles are overpriced. I, my, my Avalon back in Rutland it has four on the floor. Its engine is probably dead. I don't even know how many thousands of dollars it would still be worth in trade-in right now. Probably a substantial amount, of course, then. You have to deal with not having a vehicle or trading it in towards an even more expensive one. Uh, so probably just get it repaired. I'm hoping that that's actually possible when I get back there. <laughs> not sure that that'll be the case. We'll take a look under the hood and see what happens. Booty Judge, if, if he intends to angle himself into a potential presidential position, and he clearly does have such designs, even though the only jobs he's had is mayor of South Bend, nobody cares, and transport secretary, again, nobody cares. This is definitely not a good preamble to making such a run. Hey, let them eat cake. Let them eat lithium. Uh, get an electric vehicle and you won't mind the gas prices. 
Well, they would. Uh, unfortunately, those gas prices, the oil price in general, also affects every other aspect of transportation and maintenance and the economy in the more broad sense. The cost of electricity for charging electric vehicles has very little to do with that because they're simply not being used in those roles. That's about all. Peace out.